much you took advantage of her. Oh, this is what happens when you sit back and do nothing. People think they can step all over you. It's getting out of hand and it has to stop. You think I enjoy having my name dragged through the mud? You have no idea what I'm feeling. I know exactly what it's like for you because the same thing happened to me. Kin, weeknights at 8.30pm on 5. You can watch it first on Toggle. Brought to you by Mitsubishi Electric Starmex Air Conditioner. Tonight on 5. Good evening, I'm Angela Lim. The top stories on News 5. New Zealand is on high security alert after the deadliest mass shooting in the country's history claims at least 49 lives. The personal details of over 800,000 blood donors here were accidentally put online by a health sciences authority vendor. And sales of private homes rose over 18% year-on-year in February, despite an uncertain economic outlook and new property cooling measures. And coming up later in the program, have a health check coming up? You no longer need to fast if you're being screened for certain conditions. More details later in the show. Our top story tonight, New Zealand is reeling from the deadliest mass shooting in the country's history. At least 49 people are dead and close to 50 others injured, some critically, after gunmen opened fire at two mosques in the city of Christchurch. The attackers struck the El Noor and Linwood mosques during afternoon prayers. One of them even live-streamed the attack on social media. The El Noor Mosque, which bore the brunt of casualties, had been filled with worshippers at that time, including members of the Bangladesh cricket team. The attack sparked a huge security operation and sent the city's streets into lockdown. I just lie down under the bench and I'm thinking that, you know, if I get out, I'll get shot, so I better, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed so I could be alive. But yeah, you know, I was the last guy to come out of the mosque after the shooting stopped. And on the doors, there were a lot of bodies. We heard, you know, the firing, and it was from the main entrance, the main entrance of the building. And then everybody just ran through the back doors just to save themselves. Three men and one woman have been taken into custody. One has been charged with murder and will appear in court tomorrow. Police say the attack was a very well-planned operation. They say the four held extremist views but had not been on any police watch list. All mosques across the country have been asked to close and the threat level has been raised to the highest for the first time. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said it was one of New Zealand's darkest days. But she vowed that the country would not be shaken. Those values, I can assure you, will not and cannot be shaken by this attack. We are a proud nation of more than 200 ethnicities, 160 languages, and amongst that diversity, we share common values. And the one that we place the currency on right now and tonight is our compassion and the support for the community of those directly affected by this tragedy. And secondly, the strongest possible condemnation of the ideology of the people who did this. You may have chosen us, but we utterly reject and condemn you. Now, we spoke with a Singaporean living in Christchurch. She was mere minutes away from one of the mosques that was attacked. Take a listen. I didn't hear the gunshot, but um, from the sirens itself and the helicopters um, on air, it was quite a harrowing um, situation. And um, I was at home and just worried about my friends who were outside and some of them were at the mosque. Yeah, so that was um, 
you know, it was actually quite frightening trying to look for uh, people, whether they were okay and those, whether they're accounted for and so on. Singapore, along with many other countries, has condemned the attack. MFA says that no Singaporeans have been injured in the shootings. The authorities say they are assisting those with family members in Christchurch and have reached out to all e-registered Singaporeans there. They've also advised them to stay vigilant and heed the advice of local police. Foreign Affairs Minister Vivian Balakrishnan said in a Facebook post that Singapore's thoughts and prayers are with the victims and their loved ones during this difficult period. President Halima Yaqob also conveyed her condolences on social media. She condemned what she described as an act of cowardice that is meant to stoke religious hatred and conflict. Prime Minister Lee Sin Lung expressed his deep shock at the horrific attacks which he said occurred despite the distance between New Zealand and the terrorist hotspots in the Middle East and Southeast Asia. He added that this served as a somber reminder of the global threat and the need for Singapore to stay vigilant. Mr Lee also said Singapore needs to respond with unity, fortitude and resilience to this attempt to spread fear and hatred. The Inter-Religious Organization, or IRO, has strongly denounced all heinous acts of terror and is especially alarmed that holy places of worship have been targeted. In other news we're tracking tonight, Chinese Premier Li Keqiang says it is not realistic for the economies of China and the US to be decoupled from each other. Both countries are trying to strike a deal to resolve an ongoing trade war. Mr. Li was speaking in a wide-ranging media conference at the end of China's annual parliament session. Among other things, he also rejected allegations that Beijing could use Huawei's equipment for spying. The US has been pressuring its Western allies not to use Huawei technology over espionage claims. North Korea is considering suspending nuclear talks with the U.S. It might also resume missile and nuclear tests, unless Washington makes concessions. Vice Foreign Minister Choi Soon Hee revealed this today. She blamed U.S. officials for the breakdown in last month's Trump Kim summit and accused them of throwing away a golden opportunity. But Ms. Choi said relations between Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un remained positive. Over in the UK, British Prime Minister Theresa May is trying for a third time to get Parliament to agree to her Brexit deal by next Wednesday. Otherwise, she says she'll have to ask the EU for an even longer delay to Brexit. This comes after several days of high drama in the UK Parliament. Mrs May's withdrawal agreement was rejected for a second time, along with a no-deal Brexit. Just yesterday, MPs agreed to ask the EU to delay Brexit beyond the current 29th March departure date. Back home, the private data of over 808,000 blood donors in Singapore could have been accessed online after an oversight by an IT vendor. The Health Sciences Authority said the information, which included details like names, NRIC and blood donation details, was placed on an internet-facing server against protocol on 4th January. The database did not contain other sensitive information, medical or contact information. HSA said a cybersecurity expert discovered the vulnerability on 13th March and reported it to the authorities. HSA said the vendor, Secure Solutions Group, had not put in place the adequate safeguards. HSA apologized to affected blood donors for the vendor's lapse and assured them that its centralized blood bank system is not affected. My colleague Vanessa Lim joins us now from the HSA building. Now, Vanessa, you've been following this story for a while. Tell us a bit about any details you can share at this point. Right, so it all started about nine weeks ago on the 4th of